Today's reading is found in John chapter 11, verse 1 through 44. Now I'm only going to read verse 38 through 44, and I invite you, if you haven't already, go back and read the whole story before finishing the rest of this devotional this morning. This is the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead. So let me read in verse 38. Jesus, intensely moved again, came to the tomb. Now it was a cave, and a stone was placed across it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, replied, Lord, by this time the body will have a bad smell, because he's been buried for four days. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you that you have listened to me. I knew that you always listen to me. But I said this for the sake of the crowd standing around here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he shouted in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The one who had died came out, his feet and hands tied up with strips of cloth, and the cloth wrapped around his face. Jesus said to them, unwrap him and let him go. I love the honesty here in Martha's faith through the story. Early in the story, you see that she believes Jesus could and even would have raised Lazarus from the dead, would have healed him. But Jesus here is challenging her faith that he not only has the power to heal, but raise Lazarus from the dead beyond when Martha thought it was possible. You see, Martha believed Jesus, but, but the more time that went by, the less she had faith in his ability to do so or willingness to do so. See, it's four days since Lazarus died. And originally Martha asked Jesus to come quickly and heal him, but her faith started running out. See, Martha starts thinking, okay, if you came right away, I believe that you would have healed him, that you would have saved him, that you would have raised him from the dead. But now it's like four days and it's, point, it's past the point of my faith. His body's decaying already. Now, this is me. I'm Martha in this story. I don't know about you, but sometimes people ask me to pray for their healing. And, and I pray faithfully. I do it out of obedience. But but sometimes there's a new diagnosis and that new diagnosis is worse. And I'll pray again in faith, but, but truthfully, there are many times that I pray, but my heart is not ready to believe that it's going to happen. My heart usually is believing the worst or sometimes at least believes the worst. I, I pray in obedience. I, I have faith or I, or I exercise faith or I communicate faith in obedience, but, but oftentimes I don't have confidence of what I'm asking for and whether or not it's going to happen. You see, I trust God, but I also trust my human analysis of the situation. And, and often I, I trust my human analysis more. I trust that God can do anything and everything that if, if he couldn't, then he wouldn't be God. So, so I believe that he actually can do everything. I, I just oftentimes don't trust that he will. See, Jesus says to Martha, didn't you trust me earlier when I told you that I'm here to display the glory of God? He's asking her, do you believe that I'm going to do this in light of your human reasoning, in light of the questions that you have? Do you believe that that's what I'm here to do and I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do? Another way that you can think about it is Jesus is asking her, do you surrender your limited and finite understanding in exchange for a raw, childlike faith. If you're like me, then there are many ways in which you are not currently trusting God. There are many aspects of your life and your well-being and your comfort and your satisfaction and your desires and your hopes. There are many ways that you are cool with maintaining control over them, that you trust yourself, you trust your abilities, you trust your reasoning over trusting in what God has asked or what God has said. You see, you trust Jesus with your salvation, but... You trust yourself to provide everything else on your own. You rely on yourself more than God. 
is really what it is. You have faith, like Martha had faith, but you also have a lot more doubt. And you have a lot more faith in yourself and your control over the way you think and you feel and you act than having true, genuine, full surrender faith in all areas of your life. I invite you today, as you're processing today's devotional, I invite you to surrender your opinion or your perception of what's true, what's possible, what's even realistic. And I invite you to replace that with a faith, a faith that God can, a faith that God will, or that he wants to do certain things, and ultimately a faith that his way for your life is better than your way for your life. It may be considered naive or reckless by the world, but that's okay. It's what we're called to. 